So welcome everybody. This is the special interest group uh, for PNP Sites Core and PNP PowerShell. Uh, so essentially we concentrate on the uh, CSM extension core components and the PNP PowerShell and the PNP provisioning engine. Um, and thank you for guys for joining. Uh, I'm just going to remind you and most likely we will lose some of you. Right now there is actually another big, big, big Microsoft event ongoing uh, where Sa even Satya is talking and that's the, the, the collaboration Microsoft event. So you can actually choose if you want to watch this as a recording or have a watch on that one recording because there's some pretty cool announcements on that one as well we just didn't want to reschedule this community call because we always keep it on every bi-weekly on this particular time um, so unfortunately this week we are overlapping with a relatively big announcement as well <coughs> which doesn't directly uh, touch SharePoint but uh, it has an impact on the Office 365. But either way, your choice, uh, which one do you actually want to watch? Uh, and good to see that we still have people on the call, so we didn't lose uh, every one of you. So let's actually get on going on the slides. So a uh, few things, just to make sure that we get the, always this one covered. So SharePoint Patterns and Practices is a community-driven uh, initiative. Uh, coordinated and owned by the SharePoint engineering. And what we do within the SharePoint patterns and practices is that we provide code samples, guidance documentations, we have monthly community calls and the special interest uh, community calls. Uh, and the themes are in SharePoint framework, SharePoint add-ins, Microsoft Graph, Office 365 development. More and more, we are uh, kind of a concentrating on a SharePoint site and that's mainly because, and obviously not forgetting Microsoft Graph at all, uh, but that's mainly because the, the whole initiative is owned by the SharePoint engineering as well. But we definitely want to make sure that we cover, if there's anything on the on the other areas of Office 365, we touch those as well. Um, but uh, main concentration is on the SharePoint side. Uh, so agenda for today, I actually dropped all of the, in quotes, nonsense slides, which we typically repeat in every single call, which is some of the things, some of the feedback what we've been always getting. Uh, uh, so we kind of concentrate mainly on content and mainly new stuff. So we're going to have a quickly look on the October 2016 uh, uh, quick peek. Well, that's a uh, English. Uh, let's have a have a look on the quick uh, uh, quick look on the October 2016 uh, numbers on the PMP core component usage. Uh, then season look at package update on that one because last Friday we actually released a new season uh, package again. Uh, PMP moving in GitHub. Uh, this is something which might touch you. Uh, slightly. Um, actually, it's good to know, but GitHub is implemented in a clever way enough that it doesn't impact anybody who's consuming a stuff from a GitHub, which is pretty awesome. And let's talk about that one as well. Uh, we're going to talk about updates on the BMP PowerShell and the modern team sites programmatic provisioning. So we're going to do a demo in both uh, the BMP PowerShell changes uh, and what's over there, and then also on the modern team site programmatic provisioning. And then uh, related on the programmatic provisioning, we're going to about slightly on the existing or the current limitations on on the modern team sites uh, so what you can do what you can modify and what you cannot modify and all of that because i think that's really really important to everybody to understand um, what you can do with the modern team sites uh, and what's coming up maybe in the future as well there's certain things which we cannot mention uh, but since already today you can actually provision modern team sites uh, within sharepoint uh, within sharepoint online um, we want to cover this uh, within the call as well so you are aware that these are already available um, and you are aware of uh, based on messaging from Microsoft rather than uh, reading that from a random blog post in internet so let's actually uh, keep on moving so monthly metrics uh, quickly uh, this is a really early summary on things but I we just uh, collected or got the final metrics yesterday. So from a PMP core component and PowerShell uh, usage perspective, uh, the unique tenants which are using the PMP uh, have grown 13.2% uh, and we're up to, what was it, 2,600 tenants roughly, uh, which are using PMP core component or PowerShell in the production. 
The HTTP requests are hitting 800 million requests uh, within a month um, across to the 2,500 uh, tenants. So if you're planning kind of a considering, is this a, is this a, a production proven stuff? Uh, can, can I actually do this in a production, even though it's a community effort? Uh, trust us, uh, you can. The BMP is owned by the SharePoint engineering. And if there's any critical things, uh, we absolutely want to help. Uh, the engineering will step in and help on those things. There are areas where we have bugs uh, and we do not have explicit engineering effort from the engineering perspective on BNB. So this is a community effort, uh, which is uh, so we need actually your assistance on the issue reporting or request and all of that. Um, um, uh, on the on the versions, uh, well, one of the things what I wanted to pinpoint from the versions perspective uh, is that um, e already in October a lot of the a lot of the customizations started using the latest version, which is really good. So we are up to 832 uh, tenants uh, with the latest versions of the of the BMP core. We really wanted people to update on the latest versions because they are much more bulletproof. And there, there's a lot of bug fixes on those as well. Um, and we can nicely see that uh, there's still, there's quite a lot of usage in, in June version, August version, September version, and October versions, and all the versions are slowing down, which is a good thing. Um, from a country perspective, there's some pretty interesting statistics as well. So top five countries based on tenants, uh, United States are still number one, no changes, United Kingdom still number two and Netherlands number three. Sweden and Germany went slightly up uh, and I think they actually dropped India down from a number of tenants uh, from a particular country using BNP. And then on the based on requests, uh, the United States absolutely number one, uh, the Netherlands, United Kingdom, Brazil, uh, Brazil actually increased like 10 uh, uh, spots uh, in this competition and Denmark uh, quite heavily as well. Um, and then there was a lot of countries which went down. The reason for the, let's say, going up and down uh, is uh, typically because people use the BMP PowerShell and the BMP provisionings, for example, as part of migration. So if there's any big migrations ongoing, then those are hitting the SharePoint Online uh, much more. And obviously the most used capability is the provisioning engine. Um, so more than 800 tenants or roughly 800 tenants uh, were using the provisioning engine in production uh, within the October. Oh, no things. So quick reminder, on last Friday, we released a new version of client-side object model. So this is the native uh, client-side object model uh, for SharePoint Online, which is coming from engineering. And as the, the BMP core component and BMP PowerShell will be updated on using this in the November release. The November release will happen on this Friday or Monday or during weekend. It slightly depends. We need to synchronize uh, the repo changes and compilations and all of that. But by Monday next week, uh, we will have everything out and there will be announcement in the dev.office.com. We will have a monthly community call on next Tuesday where we're going to go through more detailed what has happened within the October uh, and what, what are the main changes. So last Friday we released a new version for SharePoint Online on the client-side object model. Uh, the next one is coming then late November. Uh, and on this one, uh, just a reminder, uh, this is only for SharePoint Online. Uh, if you use it against on-premises or SharePoint 2016, SharePoint 2013, if you hit a property which is not supported in on-premises, you will get an exception. And that's by design, because the on-premises is not aware of those properties being exposed. Um, and that's really the reason uh, why we explicitly have three different versions of client-side object model. It's not an optimal situation, uh, but there really isn't a, a simple solution uh, for that one as well. And like mentioned, we keep on pushing monthly updates on this one. Uh, there are still some uh, pretty interesting APIs in the roadmap uh, for SharePoint Online, uh, which are related on the sandbox solution deprecation. So there was quite a lot of um, ISVs and system integrators which were using sandbox solution code-based sandbox solutions because certain APIs were only exposed in a in a uh, code-based sandbox solutions, but not in season. And we've been addressing those gaps uh, quite hectically uh, during this autumn, and there's still a few items which are in the queue, which might be really interesting for you uh, in the future. Um, 
one thing kind of uh, this is the first time we announced this uh, we're going to talk about this one in the monthly community call in next Tuesday as well uh, but uh, the PMP rep repositories uh, have remained in the past and originally were created uh, in the github.com slash office dev and then the PMP prefix uh, we will relocate uh, then them under the Microsoft SharePoint organization um, be, uh, we tested this with the BMP JavaScript core rep, rep, uh, repository, uh, and it's actually pretty mind-blowing. It doesn't have any impact for anybody. So even though you would have forked your stuff, even though you have a pending changes which you want to submit back, or even though uh, you want to pull just the latest version every now and then, all of those will be still working after this change uh, between the organizations. So all of the old URLs will be automatically redirected by GitHub to the new uh, location. So it's completely seamless uh, transition, which is actually super amazing that that's possible uh, with GitHub, but it, that seems to be the situation. So we're looking into doing this uh, transition uh, from Office Dev to SharePoint organization roughly on mid-November. Uh, but like mentioned, it shouldn't have any impact uh, on your existing work. And that really relates on the fact that the, the PMP is mainly for SharePoint patterns and practices. Uh, so we want to relocate now that we have the Microsoft SharePoint organization in GitHub. We want to relocate uh, them properly there so that they're in the right location for a future from a future perspective. A few updates on the PMP PowerShell before we go to the demo uh, on uh, on this. So there are pretty significant changes actually on the PMP PowerShell. First of all we're doing a naming change. Um, the BMP PowerShell has been using a SPO as a prefix, um, and we kind of finally changed this. We, This is a, a one of those things which we, we've been discussing, or uh, the father of the BMP PowerShell, Irving, has been uh, wondering for months and months and months, and Irving is going to talk about this one in a second, um, because the SPO prefix is exactly the same as for native SharePoint Online Management PowerShell. And we do have a few overlapping commandlets there as well, which have been causing slightly challenges. So what we're going to do starting from November is that we're going to flip the, the prefix to PNP. Um, and there's some additional work related on aliases. So for the time being, all of your existing PowerShell scripts will be working completely fine. And the, the SPO prefix will be deprecated, uh, if I remember correctly, in January. Oh, sorry, it's deprecated now, but it's it's going to be removed uh, in January release. And Erwin is going to talk about that one in a second. Um, what we also have as part of the BMP PowerShell for November is a modern team site provisioning support. Uh, so there will be a native uh, support for that. Uh, it is actually using the BMP core. So you are able to provision modern team sites. Uh, just running managed code, if you have a code-based provisioning solution or running a PMP PowerShell. Uh, and we're going to do a demo on that one. Paolo is going to demonstrate that one after Irvin's uh, discussion. And we're going to talk about more about the modern team sites in a second anyway. Uh, and in well, in practice, there's a gradual support for modern team sites operation. There are quite a lot of differences between the classic team sites and modern team sites. We're going to talk about those uh, more and more slightly later. Um, but the BMB PowerShell will have a gradual support for the modern team sites uh, already in November release, and we're going to keep on working on that one uh, for the future releases as well. And then something which is super super interesting and this actually relates on the modern team side so during uh, past weeks uh, we decided to actually start working on a craft commandlets uh, as part of the pmp powershell so they are included in the pmp powershell uh, november release so what you can do is that you're able to run connect pmp microsoft craft which will then show a web login uh, as an example or so the, the web consent to actually get access on the on the on the Azure AD. And after that, in the same way as you used to operate with SharePoint uh, online PowerShell commandlets, you can operate with the with the craft commandlets. Right now we don't have that many craft commandlets, but we're gonna keep on growing that site uh, in the future as well. And obviously community contributions are more than welcome. And this way it doesn't really matter are you operating against SharePoint directly or are you operating with uh, or do you need to operate against the, the Microsoft Craft because Microsoft Craft is exposing uh, some additional settings. Um, you can actually install the PMP PowerShell and you can script all of that uh, within your uh, PowerShell scripts. And 
the, the let's say the future things whenever we get additional commandlets available. There's quite a lot of interesting scenarios to automate uh, with Microsoft Graph. But let's have a look on those commandlets uh, in a second. But first, let's move into Irvin. So Irvin is going to show slightly, I'll talk about the, the, the naming chains within the PMP PowerShell site. Right, you have to bump me up to... Oh, I didn't do that, sorry for that. So let's actually upgrade you as a presenter. There we go. This time that I didn't throw you away from a meeting. I've done that in the past. <laughs> <actually>. <laughs> yeah. Right, let me share my screen. Uh, yep. yep, I see okay. it. Okay, good. So it all started with uh, when we introduced these commanders, we were thinking of a prefix, and we did, we decided to settle on SPO because it makes sense, Shepard Online. Over time, it actually started to make less sense because we're not only targeting Shepard Online, we're also targeting Shepard on-premises. So the SPO thing was a bit confusing, and we even got questions like, uh, so which command list do I use to target on-premises because it's SPO? So that's one thing. Um, another thing, which was actually more blocking, is the... Um, and let me move on to the next slide, is the fact that there are two SP get SPO site commandlets. So one comes with the Microsoft Office 365 management shell, and one, com one comes with SharePoint PNP. So that, that's pretty confusing. So which one to use and which one is active? Um, and I will show you the, the conflict in the, uh, when I do the demo. So there are a couple of workarounds for that, is that you explicitly load the module at the time you want to use it, but that's also not very nice. Now, there's two other workarounds. One of the workarounds is that you explicitly specify the full module name where the command that comes from. That's the first two lines there you see. So the first one, microsoft.online.sharepoint.powershell backslash get SPO site will use the one from that module. And SharePoint PNP PowerShell Online backslash get SPO site uses the PNP version. Uh, that's not very nice either. There's a lot of typing you have to do, and you have to remember the, the module names. Um, another option is that you create an alias, new alias like GMSO site, get Microsoft online site, uh, and then you specify the value, you put the full path uh, to the commandlet in there, and then you have two aliases available for both commandlets, and you can use the ones uh, at will. The, the problem with that is, is that you have to remember to create those aliases on all the machines where you use these modules. Uh, so aliases, mm, maybe not the way to go forward. So we came, with, as I as, as Vesa mentioned, uh, I've been thinking about this for, for months, what to do, and we finally decided, like, you know what, we're going to rename all the commandlets. So we're renaming them from verb-spo noun to verb-pnp noun. That would potentially, if we just do this, break all your scripts, which is not very nice. Obviously, so we came up with a solution there is that we do populate aliases for you. So in this case, get SPO site will become get PNP site, but get SPO site will still work. Now get, get SPO site is a special case, but uh, I will show you that in a minute when I go into the demo. So let's uh, show my PowerShell session here, and you should see uh, PowerShell. So what I did now is I did already connect it to the, uh, with the SPO service commandlet. Uh, to my tenant, and if I enter get SPO site, I get their version of get SPO site, and the result is that I get all my sites here. Then if I create um, or connect with my uh, online commandlet, the PNP one, sharepoint.com, slides demo one, doesn't really matter which site I connect to, and now I use get SPO site, I get the one from PNP, which is confusing. It's the same command, lit, the same command I'm entering, but a different results. The results here is that I get all the sites in my tenant, and here I get a single site back, which is, happens to site that I connected to. For the developers among us, what I'm returning here is the site context, or actually the site object from the current context. Now you see that we already put um, this little warning there. So this commandlet we will deprecate and effectively remove in January 2017. So you have a few months to, to update your scripts. Now, it's not a very often used commandlet. Um, the get SPO web commandlet is way more often used. But if you want to get hold of the site, get SPO site was the way to go forward right now. The way to use it from now on, if you can, is get PNP site. Same results, no warning. 
Um, and from now on, as that will say from next week when we release the, the updated command lists, uh, all the command lists that used the SPO one will now use um, PNP. So you can do connect PNP online, same thing. Um, get PNP provisioning engine, which actually, from a commandlet name perspective, makes more sense because you get, you're not getting a Shabbat online provisioning engine template, um, but uh, PNP provisioning, sorry, template, uh, but you get a PNP provisioning template. So naming actually makes in, in uh, many situations much more sense. Um, if you go for help and you say get help, get FPO site, you will get a simple help and basically nothing. We were not really promoting you to use this one, but the get, as I said, the get, get SPO site one is a bit of a different case um, because if I do get uh, help uh, get PNP provisioning template, it returns the help for, obviously for provisioning template. If I do the same for get SPO provisioning template, SPO provisioning template, it returns the help for get PNP provisioning template. So. The get SPO site is a different case, but all the other templates are just or command lists are just aliases to the PNP versions. Now, if you want to know how we did that, if you, uh, depending a bit on where the command lists installed are, uh, are installed or how you install them, either using the gallery or using the MSI uh, or setup that you can download from GitHub. Um, in this case, I'm um, in, in developer mode, so to say, so they're installed in my local uh, uh, user directory. Um, and in this folder, there's a bunch of files in there, but what the main file here is this file here, the PSM1 file. So if you, if you look into that file, get content SharePoint PMP online, uh, SharePoint PMP PowerShell online PSM1, you will see that there's a bunch of set alias commands there. So basically, that's what we do. So if you want to get rid of the aliases before we release this or before we change it, just to remove these aliases on this file, <coughs> and you're all set. Um, the only difference, again, to get SPO site, there is no alias for get SPO site. There are actually two commandlets, one get PNP site and get SPO site, and that's how we are able to do the warning. So we have alias for all the commandlets. Uh, all your scripts uh, will just happily work. If you use get SPO site, you will get a warning, but that's it. It shouldn't break your script. The script will just happily continue. But from now on, um, you will, uh, we urge you to use the PNP prefix and not the SPO prefix anymore. We will deprecate the aliases sometime next year, um, and we will announce that uh, way ahead of time um, because we want to get rid of I mean, aliases is not a recommend a thing to do. Um, they, um, they can be different on different machines, etc., etc. So um, if you can steer clear from aliases, it's a good thing. But this is the only way we could put it up, uh, pull it off. Well, we could have created for every command a copy. So get an SPO, get SPO provisioning template, and get PNP provisioning template. But that would just be more confusing too. Um, so this is how we did it. Um, this will just, if you update uh, to the latest command list, you will get this automatically. And from that moment on, uh, please use PMP. Uh, and that's the whole story behind it. Um, so big change, but it shouldn't affect you much. But yeah, consider upgrading your script. Yes. Now, most people wait a month, but so, but somewhere in December, your script should at least be... Uh, PNP fight, or how you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. but on that one, Irvin, just to clarify that as well. So the 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 thing is that you have to change the the SP, get SPO site. You don't have to change any of the other things. So you can actually do Correct. a find in your scripts if I'm using the SPO site. The other with ones will be working slightly longer or longer because we have the aliases for them, uh, and then. Yep. Uh, hopefully by mid of whatever next year, if you're updating to the latest version of PMP PowerShell, uh, you will need to update uh, also your scripts on that. Uh, because that then version. the aliases will be gone in this. Yes. Yeah, yes. we won't have aliases there anymore. Yeah. And just yeah. to clarify for everybody in a call and watching the video maybe afterwards, um, we do understand that this is a nasty thing uh, and this might actually bite you uh, and this requires some additional work for people to do. But we need to do this at some point. Because now when we change everything to PNP prefixed, we are not overlapping with anything, uh, and this will make the future much more, let's say, flexible. 
uh, that's yep. that's really the key point. Indeed. Uh, if you, by the way, wondering one one last thing, if you're wondering, um, the, the if you, the get SP, SPO side command in PMP, we do have an alternative for that one, which returns almost the same oh. thing as get SPO tenant side. I test actually. Yep. Sorry, ber- sorry, Erwin. I test stole the sharing because I wanted to. <laughs> ah, okay, no worries. But okay, get, get, get SPO tenant side or get PMP tenant side returns the same as the the SharePoint online management shell. Uh, get get SP side. Get yeah. SPO side. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then there, there has been a lot of so every now and then people are asking why are we having the the separate SharePoint Online Management shell and then a PMP PowerShells and that's a fair question uh, we in engineering we are having a discussions around this uh, but combining this slightly could be slightly uh, well it's it's much more easily said and done um, and let's see where the future aligns uh, but. Uh, after this naming change, you can absolutely use both of these commandlets, um, uh, even side by side. Even though the connection still require uh, will be required for both, um, but still, uh, I think let's see where the future aligns on on combining okay. these. So, so just before this presentation, Paolo asked me to keep talking until he popped up, and I see that he's there now. So I yeah, will he's there. Over. He's there. Yep. Uh, I'm going to show one slide, and then uh, we're going to move in Paolo. Uh, so Paolo is using a 4G connection in Italy. Uh, so hopefully the Italian teleoperators are uh, reliable enough. Uh, I don't have any issues in Finland with that. Just messing with uh, Paolo as well. Um, one thing, what I wanted to quickly, one slide, what I wanted to, you guys can probably see the demo slide. Just double checking. Uh, so there's a one slide which I wanted to quickly go through uh, before we go to the demo. Pigeons uh, <laughs> will print bits for us. Good. Um, can you guys see what I'm sharing uh, from my screen uh, perspective? Yep, it's there. Can me at least. Thanks, Irving. Good. So on the on the group slash modern team side provisioning. So just to be clear, uh, there will be uh, further announcements on this one in the future. But since already today, you can actually have a modern team sites. Uh, we wanted to go through how to make that happen rather than that you pumped into a random blog post in the internet, which is showing you how that actually can be done. Um, so let's actually use Microsoft as a community calls for actually explaining this. There will be further, uh, let's say, governance, administrative operations, announcements, and all of that related on the modern team sites uh, uh, pretty soon uh, or later, uh, pretty, pretty soon. Um, but you can already today, if you go, for example, from a UI perspective, if you go to your Office 365 tenant, you go to your uh, mailbox or one, uh, Outlook, uh, you, and you create a new group from the Outlook, it actually creates you a modern group. And if you click the Files tab within that UI, you will actually access the modern team site. So, why not actually show how this can be done currently uh, using programmatic approach? Then this approach will be aligned uh, in the future as well. I'm going to talk about that one in a second, and Paolo is going to show the demo in practice. Um, now, all groups, uh, all Office 365 groups, will have a modern team site uh, associated to them by default. And like mentioned, that's already available. Uh, you can already create this manually. Manually, you cannot manipulate this. Um, and for programmatic creation, uh, you can create these modern team sites uh, by uh, using the groups endpoint in a Microsoft Graph. So if you create a new group using the Microsoft Graph endpoint, uh, and then you hit the files collection in the groups endpoint, uh, that will actually provision the, the SharePoint site for the group itself. Um, we're looking into combining that as a single event or a single operation in engineering. So in the future, when you create a, a Office 365 group, we will actually create uh, the Office 365, uh, sorry, the SharePoint uh, matching SharePoint modern team sites for you. Uh, right now, today, if you need to programmatically do this, uh, you will need to first create the group and then hit the endpoint uh, for the file success. Um, and then uh, whenever 
It has been provisioned. Uh, there is actually few changes on the provisioning. The provisioning itself is a super, super fast. Uh, it takes like three to five seconds uh, to have that site available. Uh, and you can see that actually visually, uh, if you go to the Outlook and you create a new group in Outlook and you click the Files tab in, out, uh, in the Outlook web UI, um, it, it will show you, hey, we're, we're making things ready for you. And it takes like five seconds and the site is ready. And you see the modern team sign. Um, at, and it's super, super fast. Uh, there are certain things which have been changed from a provisioning perspective. So some of the elements, so first of all, we changed the engine, uh, how the site provisioning actually works. Um, and it works much more faster. I'm not going to go on technical details how we did that. Uh, and then there are certain, certain things which happen asynchronously. So you can actually access the site while some of the elements are still getting provisioned. Um, which might be a challenge uh, when you're doing this programmatically. And, and we're looking on the, the proper guidance and, and insights on, on how to avoid those possible issues uh, in the future. Now, when the site has been created, uh, you can apply still, uh, as an example, a custom theme to that site. And there are uh, other ways of modifying the site. So you can actually use, uh, for example, the BMP provisioning engine, the remote provisioning engine, to apply configurations and settings to these sites. We're going to talk about uh, the exact limitations uh, in a second after Paolo's demo. But just to be aware, uh, all of these sites have a no script capability enabled. So the customizations for modern team sites are quite limited. And there are numerous reasons why this decision has happened uh, and it might cause some let's say questions and doubts and all of that but in the future whenever we are introducing the SharePoint framework capabilities the modern ways of handling branding the modern ways of embedding JavaScript um, those kind of a classic scenarios which you've been able to do in a classic uh, theme sites will be lighting up uh, in the modern theme sites as well uh, those capabilities are not yet there, but they will be gradually landing on the modern team side. So this is kind of a preview experience on the modern team sites. It will the the news experiences, the quick links, and all of that are working already properly. But then some of the customization scenarios will be lighting up slightly later. But let's talk about those limitations uh, in a second. Uh, and before we do that, uh, let's actually jump in the Paolo screen. If Paolo's, if the Italian teleoperators are able to <laughs> deliver his screen on us. <laughs> yes, hopefully the pigeons are working well so far. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> let me see if you can see my screen. I'm now <laughs> presenting my screen, so let me know when you see it. Yeah. You should see a PowerShell is right now, IZE. Still loading. Let's wait okay. a Okay. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> you need more pigeons. Yeah, there yeah. You yeah. Go. I can see what's okay. uh, being shared. At least I can. I see, yeah. Yeah. I see too. Okay, cool. So we can start. Uh, so as uh, Visa told you, uh, we try to make it possible to create uh, a unified group together with the modern site, which is uh, uh, beside the uh, unified group with a unique uh, command. And we did that uh, adding a new uh, utility class to the core library and wrapping that utility class uh, with a bunch of uh, new PowerShell CMD lets uh, which are available in the well-known uh, uh, PowerShell CMD LED for uh, uh, SharePoint PMP. So the first one and the first CMD LED we made available is the Connect PNP Microsoft Graph, which is uh, a kind of a, a complementary uh, solution for connecting against uh, Azure AD to get an access token, an open authorization access token, to consume uh, the Microsoft Graph. Internally, we use the uh, preview of the Microsoft Authentication Library, uh, so you need to be aware of that. We are still using a, uh, a bunch of preview bits uh, under the cover, but they, they work uh, so far, and uh, the MSAL will be released uh, sooner or later, but it is still uh, in preview right now. When you uh, use this CMD let, you have to provide the permission scopes you want to have in your access token so that you will be able, based on those uh, scopes, to consume uh, the graph API you want to target. So in my scenario, I want to read uh, all of the users inside of my tenant, and I want to read and write uh, all of the uh, unified groups, and more in general, 
are all of the groups uh, in the directory tenant. So if I execute this uh, SMD let, uh, a uh, login UI will pop up. Uh, depending on the DPI of your screen, you can see something uh, uh, more nice uh, or, uh, uh, or not. In my scenario, I have a high uh, number of DPI, so the UI is not very, very good. But I'm logging in using my own credentials, which are already stored in my current PowerShell session. And what I get back uh, is an access token to consume uh, all of the graph uh, uh, APIs. And if I want to see what is my access token, just to show you what you can do, uh, you can use the get PMP access token SMDLet, which is another new one, which simply gives you back as a string the access token. Or you can eventually copy the result in the clipboard if you like. It's up to you. I will do that because I will use the access token uh, to consume uh, all the following uh, CMDLets. So just to show you, and I trust you, you will not copy this uh, uh, access token on your machine, but this is my access token. And I will use this one to create a new unified group using the new PNP unified group CMDLet, which accepts a display name and a description for the unified group that will be created, as well as a mail nickname, so that you can customize the nickname and the email address of the group uh, uh, instead of using the auto-generated one. If you like, of course, you can customize it. You can provide the members and eventually the owners of the group providing the UPN of those users as an array, so a common separated list of uh, uh, UPNs. And as soon as you will execute this CMD let, you will get back in a matter of few seconds from now, or oh, we already have such a group, so let's create another one, but you will get back a group, an Office 365 group, which will be, from our perspective, from the PowerShell perspective, a complex type, which will give you information about the ID, the unique ID of the just created group, the display name, as well as the URL of the uh, modern site created under the cover. Because inside the new PMP unified group, we create, we fire the event that will create the uh, modern site for you. So just executing this CMDLet, you will get back both the group and the uh, site. And so Paolo, you can play. Paolo, Paolo yeah. sorry for interrupting you. I have to ask no, no. this because I, I think somebody else might be wondering this as well. Well, I know the answer, but it's better to actually cover that. Um, mm -hmm. So you did actually take the access token using the get PNP access token, but you don't actually bypass that to the uh, new PNP unified group. So you don't actually but, need to do that, right? Uh, yeah, it, this one was just to show you uh, the result of the connect PNP Microsoft graph. Internally, yes. all of the uh, PMP something CMD lets which use or which target the Microsoft Graph already have access to the access token retrieved using the PNP Microsoft Graph, the connect PNP Microsoft Graph CMD let. So you don't need to do that in your own uh, uh, scripts, but I, I wanted to show you the result and that you can uh, directly access the access token if you need. Just to make an example, if you want to play with it in Fiddler, for example, or whatever else, you can just get it and use it. Of course, it will expire as like as any other access token, so it will have a, a lifetime which should be uh, 20 minutes if I'm not mistaken, but uh, there's no guarantee. Maybe I'm mistaken. should be 20 minutes, by the way. Okay, so that said, I will uh, access the target site URL, which will be this one. And if I copy this URL just to show you the site already created, let me copy this guy and let me open my browser and let me show you that we have this site available on SharePoint Online. And here it is. Now, I will connect to this site as like as I can do with any other SharePoint Online site using the PowerShell from PMP. So I will access the site with my own credentials, oh, the, the right ones. OK. And I will connect PMP Online to the target site. I will get the PMP context and the PMP web object. And I can play with it. And we can see, for example, that the modern site has a site template which is group-0 instead of STS-0, STS-1, or whatever else we were used to see in the past. We have the group-0, which is a new one. We, uh, we can also play with the get PMP unified group CMD let, which can give you back all of the unified groups you have, for example, in a grid, like I will do right now. 
or you can use the get PNP unified group uh, simply let us just to get one specific group based on the ID of that group or eventually you can make a search based on the uh, initial name of the group so you can play around the uh, unified groups uh, using these uh, uh, CMD let moreover if you like uh, you can also uh, play with the uh, client side of your model and just to make an example you can apply a custom theme to the modern site you have just uh, created to be fair and to be completely clear this website this modern website that has just been created for my group uh, is not yet completely ready in fact if I go in the site settings from the gear menu here on the upper right corner of my screen you will see that we have just a kind of a subset of all the capabilities that we usually have in a uh, site settings page for a site and it is what it is but it happens because there are some background jobs that will uh, complete the creation and all of the settings of the modern site I'm sharing this information with you because right now if I will try to do some kind of operation like for example uploading a file or setting a custom theme using the client side of your model against this new site most likely those operations will fail because the site is not completely ready and all of the permissions are not completely ready. Afterwards, when the uh, site will be completely uh, ready and uh, in, in usable, I would say, you will be able to do something like that. For example, you can upload using the add PMP files and that a bunch of uh, uh, assets that can be the, uh, the SP color file, the background image, uh, or a custom logo that will customize the branding of the modern site. And using CISOM, you can use the apply theme uh, method provided out of the box by CISOM targeting the web object in order to apply a custom theme making an execute query against uh, the current uh, uh, client context I will not do that right now because as I told you my site my modern site is not yet completely ready but I already did it in another uh, sample site which I created before which is this one in which you can see hopefully you can see we have a, a nice background image we have a custom logo and we have a custom color palette for my uh, modern site and this PMP Siege demo uh, 02 is still a site under the cover of a group that I have here in my groups uh, in, in the uh, Outlook Web Access uh, UI. So, just to wrap up, you have a bunch of new uh, CMD LED available. The first one and most interesting is the Connect PMP Microsoft Graph 1, which can be used to get an access token to consume uh, the graph uh, in general. Right now, we already provide you a few uh, CMD LED to create uh, a new unified group or to get an already created unified group or to list uh, all of the unified groups and we also do provide a remove PNP unified group that you can use to clean up your environment if you are just playing with a demo like me for example or if you wanna simply remove uh, a, a unified group again be careful that whenever you remove a unified group usually the unified groups group disappears pretty soon it's a matter of few seconds but the modern site can be alive for a while for at least a few seconds or even minutes so don't rely on the already existing modern site because sooner or later it will disappear automatically and, and you will lose it so I think that's all on my side uh, Visa so if Paolo, there are any questions yeah Paolo before yeah? we actually move on can you go back on the sites you were moving so fast uh, oh sorry about that sorry was and just show the front page of the site that we have a custom uh, branding on it as well because when you click the files in the outlook you will land on the documents folder but yeah. um, then you can always click again the home from the left and you land on the on the modern team site front page where we have then the news capability and, and all of the other ones uh, let's see it is can you see it now yeah no not yet not yet, not yet. oh I'm you're sorry. moving quite fast so oh there is a but backlog it, now the okay. pigeons have a huge backlog <laughs> yes exactly so now now we can see that now we have a custom okay. theme here with a custom well custom blue this is there's a custom logo as well and there's a background image on the background so uh, we get that one covered and documented also on the on the video so 
it actually works. It is by design supported uh, from an engineering perspective for now. Uh, and well, for now is a wrong thing to say, but uh, we are working on a slightly more extensive branding scenarios in the future. But for the time being, uh, the theming is the way how to how to control branding in modern team science. Now, let me go back on my slides. Uh, we got sure. that one recorded. Uh, and let's talk about some of the things which you might want to be aware, because you don't want to go right now and send a message to all of your customers saying, hey, we can do more than team sites. We want to make this happen. So first of all, these are now still in preview stage. So they're pretty, pretty early. There will be more announcements later on uh, on the on the, let's say, the capability perspective and when they are ready to be used uh, properly. Uh, and let's wait a while. Can somebody confirm whenever you actually can see the screen? There's a title only available currently. I can see it. Good. Thanks, Erwin. So, uh, so let's talk about slightly what's supported with the modern site, uh, team sites currently. First of all, um, they, are, they have the no script tag enabled on them. So essentially, what's supported is pretty much exactly what's supported within the existing team sites if the no script uh, is enabled. But the thing to be aware, you cannot uh, disable the no script from the modern team sites. And that will then uh, has some uh, level of an implications. So from a branding perspective right now, uh, the theming, a custom theme can be applied to the modern sites uh, with a certain tricks as well. Uh, well I wouldn't say tricks. You cannot actually create a compost looks uh, in the compost look gallery, but you can apply a custom theme. Um, so, which is one thing to be aware. Uh, the future branding capabilities are not yet announced. Uh, they are in the roadmap, and we're looking into them uh, in the engineering. But we cannot actually disclose uh, all of the future things uh, what will be available. But there will be more, uh, let's say, options from a branding perspective. These modern team sites do not have a support for custom master pages. Uh, and that's a really important thing to be aware of as well, uh, which is kind of aligned on something which we announced two years ago already related on Dune. Uh, it's not recommended to use custom master pages, so you need to be aware of that. So the theming is fine, no custom master pages. Um, no support for front page modifications for now. So when you're modern, uh, provisioning modern team sites, there's no APIs to actually control what's in the front page. So right now, currently, uh, there's no APIs to modify, for example, to introduce new pages or or the layout changes within the within the team sites because we're still in kind of a preview stage uh, and the, the future stuff. Uh, well, in the future, there will be APIs to do more control. Uh, there's no support for app only creation, uh, which means that uh, the backend, let's say, processes which might be running in Azure as an Azure web job or whatever, um, you cannot use an app only access token. And that really uh, relates on the group creation. You cannot actually create uh, Office 365 groups with an app only token. Uh, and obviously, we're looking into this one as well uh, internally in the engineering. Um, there's no support for custom master pages. Well, that was kind of mentioned over there. I didn't. Uh, I relocated that uh, underneath the branding. No support for JavaScript. Uh, the no script tag for sites means that you are unable to do user custom actions or JS link uh, events for the time being. We're looking into having that support in the future in certain level, uh, certain level using the SharePoint framework. But all of that work is not yet finalized, uh, so that support is missing still within the modern team sites. Uh, there's no support for layout changes currently, so you can only see that layout, what, what you have in the front page, or when you're creating new pages, there's no kind of a multiple different layouts. So it's a limiting factor to be aware. Uh, and if you create a subsite, um, it is actually still a classic uh, theme site. So if you start creating a hierarchy underneath the root site, uh, you are actually creating SDS hash zero sites underneath there. And again, once again, we're looking into having that, uh, there's a, a new subsite temp, modern theme site, uh, subsite template available sooner or later. So all of the, you need to be aware of this. Um, and um, 
in some way, this is also just, a, and, I, and I can imagine that some people are like super disappointed and like, damn, I know, why, why aren't this, all of this stuff uh, yet ready? And that really comes down on a simple thing. Even though we're Microsoft, we do not have an infinite resources. And what we wanted to do, and how we how we release these nowadays in SharePoint uh, quite often, you've seen this in the past as well, within the last year for SharePoint Online, we want to give you visibility and and provide you transparency on what's coming. Not all of the capabilities which will be there supported in the future are yet available, because, but we want to have you visibility on the modern things and modern capabilities which are coming, and then it's up to you to decide when are we ready to adapt the new capability. When is it actually fulfilling your business requirements and customization requirements or technical requirements, and then you start adapting the new capabilities. And that's, from my perspective at least, that's much better solution rather than us waiting for months and months more to give you any insights and then we come up with a, a solution and then we really would not be able to take your feedback into account uh, as much as we can with this, this approach where we introduce you a new capabilities and then you're able to actually tell us what's missing or what's super critical for you. You're able to give us feedback more and we are still able to adjust what's actually coming uh, based on the input what you're providing. So uh, there is a valid comment from Ramona uh, or and Dean uh, that's too many uh, cans and no's. And yes, you're absolutely correct. And that's the situation again currently. Now, let's think about this, like mentioned, let's think about this from an alternative option. We could have waited until March and not announce anything, not tell anybody anything. And then on March, we come up with a full solution where everything is enabled. Would that have been a nicer solution for you guys? And, and I think not, actually. This way, you have a transparency. You know what's coming. You know what's, what's there. You're able to play around with the new capabilities. And like mentioned, you are able to decide when the, it is mature enough for you to adapt that, rather than wait additional months, uh, being unaware of what's coming and unable to give us feedback on, on what's missing. And that's really the, the way we should be thinking around uh, the, the, well, the HL way, how we're introducing uh, some of the new capabilities. We're not going to take any classic sites away. You can still do classic. You can still do classic SharePoint sites. You can still create sites. All of the existing site model will work as it is. So that's not impacted at all with this change. And you can control all of these settings whenever we will release uh, those control settings uh, into admin UI as well. Uh, there will be more information all of the, uh, for all of this uh, in the future, uh, pretty, relatively soon. Good. That's pretty much sums up the, the discussion around this one, and we are pretty much on the on the schedule and the timing of the of the call as well. Just a reminder from a development perspective. Uh, this is a reminder which I didn't take away. It's a good reminder for for to repeat in every single uh, call. For all of the new development stuff, uh, SharePoint uh, dev.com uh, sorry dev.office.com slash SharePoint is the location. Um, we will have still the PNP MSDN, but if you're looking into SharePoint framework and the modern ways of customizing SharePoint, then all of that guidance will be in the dev.office.com slash SharePoint. The classic APIs, CSM APIs, uh, provisioning stuff, uh, the, the classic provisioning stuff, the PNP provisioning stuff will be in the PNP MSDN uh, uh, for the time being and, and in the future as well. But if you're looking into the latest SharePoint framework and adding model, and modern way of doing development, that guidance will be in the dev.office.com slash SharePoint URL. And we're working on a new experience on this one as well. Uh, sooner or later, you'll see much more nicer site uh, on this URL as well. Good. There was a few uh, good comments. I don't know if I missed any, any good questions uh, in the discussion. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And I'm going to just quickly scan through. Do, 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 do. 
Can we migrate existing theme sites to the modern theme sites in the future? Uh, can't comment, unfortunately, on that one yet. Uh, so what we wanted to do within this call is just to show you, because from a UI perspective, you can actually get the modern theme sites available, just to reduce uh, the confusion and tell you whatever we can actually tell around the modern theme sites and what can be actually done. Uh, can we develop with SharePoint Framework on-prem now? Uh, good question uh, from Larry. The answer is no. Uh, the the on-premises support for SharePoint Framework is scheduled for SharePoint 2016 uh, for next calendar year. Technically, however, you can do modern web development and web stack development already in SharePoint 2010, SharePoint 2013, SharePoint 2016 as well in on-premises, which would be pretty much 80% aligned or 80% level of the SharePoint framework. And we will do actually a specific webcast uh, and demonstration on that one uh, sooner or later within upcoming weeks. Um, so which will, where we will show how that can be actually uh, done. So you're able to adapt to modern ways of doing customizations, even though you're doing development, even in SharePoint 2010, because there's no actual technical limitations for adapting this modern way of doing web stack development. No, you cannot use SharePoint framework because that's technical readiness and framework within the platform. And that's not shipped uh, anywhere else than SharePoint Online and for the developer tenants for the time being. For on-premises, we will land, we promise to deliver that uh, within the next calendar year, meaning 2017 for SharePoint 2016. So it's going to be part of the uh, feature pack releases at some point. Good. Any other questions? We have a few minutes or comments or, or whatever. And I can imagine that Ramona's comment is related on the guidance, how to actually adapt the modern way of doing development. And that's really, we really want to do that. It's, this is a, the November seems to be a relatively busy month. There's the MVP summit is the next week. Um, so the engineering people are there and the MVPs are there. And then there's the European SharePoint conference in Vienna after that. And a lot of the people are there as well. Uh, are webhooks available on all dev tenants? And sorry, yes, they are. And they are actually available in the first release tenants as well. So webhooks can be used. How we do things in a classic way such that we don't obsolete ourselves. Yes, Ralph, absolutely agree on that. That's our objective within that, let's say, thread of guidance. Yes, we'll do that. Uh, So I have a dev tenant. I'm getting the request operation is not part of experimental feature, and that might be related on if that's related on the webhooks. Yes, that might be related on the webhook discussion. That the webhook in the dev tenants. Please do make sure that that dev tenant has been marked as a first release tenants as well, because you can actually have dev tenants which are not first release tenants. So the dev hooks are. 100% released for first release tenants, so absolutely should be available. Uh, let everyone know where you are discussing that thread. Yes, uh, on the on the modern way of doing development for on premises. We'll do proper announcements uh, in the in the tech community. Um, uh, so we're trying to do all of our com communications in this following address as well, like AMS, SBB, and B community. And that's going to pinpoint or redirect you to the SharePoint developer group in the tech community. Now, you can read stuff from the tech community without signing in. Uh, uh, the signing in then uh, it requires that, well, you're signing in. But all of that information is available from there. Good, and really the tech community is, is the replacement for Yammer. Uh, we want to move the discussion uh, to the tech community from that perspective. But I think we are running out of time, so let's start closing up on the on the call itself. Uh, thank you everybody for 
joining. Uh, we will have a monthly community call next Tuesday uh, with additional demos and additional discussions. We'll do a summary on what has happened within the last month uh, related on SharePoint FX, related on BNP core component and PowerShells and all of that. And we'll absolutely, and, and that video will be out, oh, sorry, that session will be recorded as well and published in the YouTube. This particular video will be released in the YouTube within 24 hours in the address of SPBNP uh, videos uh, so you're able to get the recording from there uh, in the future but thanks everybody for joining thanks uh, for the great demos Paolo and Irvin as well and let's uh, absolutely stay in touch thank you